scrap. It's the currency of rust. It's these magic pieces of junk that provide you with the knowledge to craft anything you want. So naturally, I want a lot of it, and ideally in the safest and most efficient way possible. One monument that has always been good for this is the underwater labs. The main problem with the labs though is that your inventory tends to fill up pretty quickly. And especially as a solo, you can never seem to swim everything home. This got me thinking, what if I built an underwater pipeline that I could use to pump all the loot from labs straight into the boxes at home, granting me practically limitless inventory space. The underwater labs on this map was in the snow, meaning that with a bit of luck, we could build on a nearby iceberg and shorten the pipeline distance significantly. We made the journey to the snow to find out. That could be the perfect, oh, there's a base on it. I was just about to say it could be the perfect iceberg, given where underwater labs is. But there's a base, it doesn't look too big that base, so not out of the picture yet. It is in the perfect position though. From where I was standing, this base didn't look like it was too big a threat, and I had gotten extremely lucky on my run over and found a jackhammer in a road crate. And a jackhammer plus the snow is generally a pretty good combination to getting enough sulfur to raid whoever you please. Okay, so I'm just going to throw down a starter base here, just in the side of this cliff, because I think I eventually want to build my main base on the iceberg itself. So we just build a little secluded base up here for now while we get the stuff to hopefully raid them. I'm just going to quickly head over to the iceberg and check out what this base is actually like. Because we don't have any BP, so the most we can raid with is satchels at the moment. Okay, so sheet metal. It's like a 2x2 two two with some honeycomb. Armoured. Oh, that's not a good sign. That's armoured. Sheet metal doors, but there's no doubt garage doors in there. That's a double door frame right there. That's probably a garage door. Which is going to make this really tough to raid with satchels. No blueprints on the server meant that raiding at this stage was very limited. The best I could do was satchels, and given that I was all but certain this armoured iceberg base had garage doors, which are not cheap to raid with satchels, I had a bit of a grind ahead of me if I wanted to evict them. Thing is, I didn't have a choice. If I wanted to claim this iceberg as my own and build my pipeline from it, raiding them was my only option. Dude, it's 840 scrap to get satchel charge tech treed. That is a lot of scrap. I spent the next hour and a half solely focusing on farming barrels, running roads, and doing the sewer branch keycard puzzle. Eventually, I had all I needed just to get satchel charge on the level one tech tree. Now all I needed was the sulfur. Thankfully, this was the relatively easy part because of the jackhammer that I had fortunately found earlier. I farmed enough for 10 satchels, then headed to the floating rock to get started. All right, I'm blowing this wall because 10 satchels is cheaper than a sheet metal door and garage door. Okay, interesting. Not ideal. Another garage door we gotta go through. That's nine more satchels. I did go the right way though, because if I'd gone through doors, it would have been more satchels. So that's a win. Let's break this furnace and see if we can see through to the next door. That's an armored door. Oh no. Only a garage door and an armored door left to go through. That's only 24 satchels. I farmed and then did some farming and then farmed some more only to do some more farming and eventually we had enough. Before I head over and blow the first door, let me tell you about today's sponsor. Rust Clash is an online gambling website, so this one's for my 18 plus viewers. They have case battles, the upgrader, plinko, roulette, mines, jackpot, and of course, cases to open. Rust Clash gives away $25,000 every week through their rain feature. They have a massive variety of deposit methods shown here, including Rust and CSGO skins, as well as crypto and credit card options, some of which give up to a 66% bonus when depositing. You can also get a 5% deposit bonus by using my code Yaxum here. Then once you're ready, you can cash out with either Rust skins or crypto. Use code Yaxum today to unlock both rake back and daily cases which can be claimed every 24 hours for free and don't forget to gamble responsibly oh okay decent stuff not there yet though okay there's actually a guy pulling up he's got to swim across though do i fight him I think I fired him because he's got to swim. That sucks. I just lost all of that. Shawanta. Hmm. Hopefully this doesn't break the tier two because I really want that. 
I wonder if Shawanta will come back. Sealed. Nice. What do we get? Pretty mid. Looks like labs loot. Oh, TC's decent. Not as much as we spent, but metal's good. There's a launcher in here. And a chest plate. Okay, there's actually decent labs loot here. Counter has just rocked up to... Okay, I think we're getting door camped now, so without an airlock, I'm not opening that front door. I should probably actually put another door on this frame here, but I don't have enough frags in here to do that, so we'll have to bring one from base. I'm going to respawn outside, though, and check if I am actually getting uh, door camped. Yep, who'd have guessed it? Ah, uh, it's this Shawanta guy again. Of course it is. I'm going to try and get another door on that base before he raids it. Okay, he's leaving. Let's see if we can see which way he goes. He's stolen my horse as well. So he's heading that general direction, which is just the rest of the map, to be honest. But other side of sewer branches, maybe where he lives. I've got to throw another door on that base, though, before he comes back and raids it. Oh, he is coming back. I should probably try and kill him. Nice. I knew he was going to come back. The iceberg had finally been secured, and it was now time to start working towards building the pipeline. That required scrap, and although I'd have plenty of this later on from my pipeline, currently we needed to spend money to make money. My first investment was of course going to be electric furnaces to speed up my cooking efficiency. I did a couple of underwater labs runs without a pipeline and spent the scrap from this texturing industrial parts and also the furnaces. Okay, so we've got electric furnace learnt now. I'm probably going to throw down quite a few of them because I'm sure I'm going to get a bunch of resources like metal and sulfur while I'm farming stone for the pipeline. I guess I should elaborate on how this pipeline is actually going to be constructed. Obviously, we've already established that I'm going to be building a loot transfer system that takes all the goods I get from underwater labs straight back to my base instantly. The first problem we encounter with this idea is that pipes have a maximum length of 30 meters and labs is slightly further away than that. To extend the line all the way into my base, I could use combiners or splitters, anything that repeats the feed and do this several times until we make up the distance. However, this pipeline needs to go underwater because, well, underwater labs is, funnily enough, underwater. Combiners and splitters and pretty much any deployable can't be placed underwater, except for a couple of exceptions. One of those exceptions is vending machines. And you may already be aware that vending machines can have storage adapters placed on them which has an input and output for pipes. So if you haven't already put two and two together, I'm going to be placing a line of vending machines across the ocean floor from underwater labs all the way to my base. But in order to do this, I have to place the vending machines on foundations that are connected to a tool cupboard to prevent them from decaying. And to fund all these foundations being placed across the ocean floor, I need to do quite a bit of farming. If you're enjoying the video, don't forget to drop us a sub. It helps the channel a bunch and I'm hoping to hit 200k by the end of the year.
I had finished the pipeline from the labs to the iceberg and initially I was planning on building my main base on the iceberg. However, given the rated 2x2 hadn't decayed yet and wouldn't for a while, instead I decided I would be setting up my main base on the flat water's edge nearby my starter base. This meant that the pipe still had a long way to go and I hadn't even begun building what would end up being my home yet. For the time before my main base was ready, I would connect the pipeline to a small boat storage base that I had set up on the water's edge, however, finishing this section of the pipe wasn't going particularly swimmingly. What? Who are these guys? Lindia. What? I've never seen this guy. They're going to be gone, dude. They'll probably just swim away. they got diving kits. Yeah, they're gone, Ski. That's annoying. I'd love to know where they live. So I just need stone now to upgrade the pipeline from the iceberg to the mainland. Alright, that's entirely upgraded now. All the way from labs to the mainland. I just need gears now, because it's three gears per vending machine. Which is kind of expensive. But we do have the pipeline set up to the base out in the iceberg, so... We'll use that for gears for now. Yo! Oh my god, what a crate. AK. Underwater lab still got it. Oh! That was a bit close. If I had lost this AK to them straight away, I would have been pissed. No. Hello. Oh, it's Lydia. This is the guy that chopped me up in the water before. Nice face. Oh, that's so ominous. Dude. Surely they don't have the stuff to raid me. Oh, they're over at Sewer Branch. Do I go for the 2v1? Yeah, of course I do. Nice. Oh, not bad. Red card as well. So it's Jacqueline. Jacqueline's the other one's name. And obviously we've got Lydia. So Jacqueline and Lydia. These guys knew where I lived. Knew I was up to some shenanigans with my pipeline and also probably weren't the biggest fans after I just rolled them at the sewer branch. Unfortunately for me, it was getting late and I had a big day of building the main base tomorrow, so needed to hop off for now. Praying that I didn't get offlined, but more than anything, hoping that the pipeline was still standing tomorrow. Oh! Oh! I did get raided. They raided my boat base? What are they- what? Why? Oh. No way. They didn't, did they? Yep. It was much worse than having blown off a couple of my front doors and the roof of my boat base. All three bases that I had owned the night before had been raided, and only two of them were left standing. The pipeline and all the progress I had made on it the day before was gone. All the farming, building, and pain for nothing, as we had to start it all again today. And for the sake of emotion, let's just assume that it actually did get raided and I didn't just forget to put upkeep in the tool cupboard overnight. Before we began the rebuild, I needed to establish a proper, defendable main base. 
I'm building the anvil by dust for those who want to know the base design. It'll be linked in the description if you want to build it yourself. This is actually said to be like a small group, four man size base, but I am building it solo. Hopefully we can actually get our money's worth and get a raid defense from this. Now you might be questioning why a solo needs such a large and expensive base and trust me, while building it, I was asking myself the same thing. Let's just say it was all worth it and you'll see why very soon. Now that the main base was finally constructed and livable, we needed to rebuild the pipeline. We still needed a lot of scrap to get ourselves a level 3 workbench and all the blueprints on that tier. And what better way to get this scrap than an automated underwater pipeline to the labs. Take 2. I can't help but feel like I've done this before. Alright, that's the first section done. Now we're gonna build all the way back to main base underwater. With the foundations laid out from underwater labs to my iceberg and then all the way to main base from there, all I needed was to farm stone to upgrade them and get the gears for the vending machines. However, someone was already out farming nodes. There's another one in the car up there. They've got a car. It's not a camper though. Oh, there would be a bear there. That's so annoying. Oh, I'm screwed. This is not a good position. Uh-oh. Okay. Oh! Geneva. And Colleen. Geneva and Colleen. I haven't seen them before. I can probably break this car. They're coming back. There's, they're coming back from that direction over there. There is a base over there. I can probably break this car to get the stuff out the back of it. There's probably farm in it. Oh, here we go. I just got to break this and get what's in it. Surely. No? It's unlocked. Oh! Sulfur! I just got to run. Depot this in the boat base and I'm gonna go kill him. Oh! Dude, my mouse got stuck on my keyboard. I literally had to pick my mouse up and remove it to kill him then. How does he lose that? Yeah, it's him again, Geneva. They must live that direction. I didn't know where these guys lived, but I did have my suspicions. The main suspect was this base that I had been farming near earlier, which was online. It wasn't far down the coast from me and was in the right direction from where these two had been running back after I killed them. I was definitely on Geneva and Colleen's radar, and if I wasn't already their enemy, Geneva was about to solidify it. Hey. Yo. Can I make car parts? Um, what if I want them? I think I'm going to keep them. Okay, that's fine. Okay. 
Okay. Oh, I don't like the sound of that at all. Well, that was rather ominous. And over the next couple hours, I not only finished upgrading the pipeline foundations, but also got scouted not once, but twice by different helis, likely checking if I was still online. I'm so getting raided, bro. Well, that's concerning. Wait, what is that? Oh, it's the new heli. They're back again. Dude, if I don't get raided, I'll be extremely surprised. That's the second time I've been scouted out. They are not flying anywhere except just over my base. Unfortunately for them, I don't get offline and spent literally hours farming roads and monuments searching for gears to finish off the pipeline. Eventually, we had all the vending machines placed and the pipes were connected, meaning we had a working pipeline that moved loot from the underwater labs all the way to inside my base. Now to test if it was actually worth it. All right, I'm gonna spend a bit of time down here, probably like half an hour to an hour and see how much we can actually accumulate. The server's only like half pop right now, so it's not going to respawn incredibly quick, but we'll see what we can do with a half pop server, sending all of our loot straight back to home. And that's exactly what I did. I sat down in the underwater labs for half an hour, sending loot back directly into my home with a pipeline that I'd built. A relatively risk-free solution to grinding scrap. After half an hour of running laps, this was my total haul. It would have been more if the server pop was full, but regardless, it's not bad if I do say so myself. I now had tier 3 equipment, and it wasn't long until I got an opportunity to use it. Oh, that is right there. Double rocketer. Okay, there's got to be a lot of them. Let's depot. I don't know what I'm going to be able to do here, but we can try. one oh no there's so many oh yeah of course there was like five or six I'll see if I can go back and clean up. Oh, what is that timing? Yeah, nothing I could do there. Maybe they'll go past my base. I'm gonna show them that I live here. Maybe they'll raid me. I didn't know who this group was, but I did know that they had boom, so maybe I could get myself an online raid from them. And about an hour and a half later, guess who came knocking? Oh shit. Surely they're not dipping. Are they leaving because they saw I was online? Bro. That's the saddest thing I've ever seen. So... Yeah, I'm pretty sure these guys thought I was no longer online and planned to offline me, only to shoot two rockets, hear me moving inside, and run away with their tail between their legs. I guess they were scared of the 1v5. Not long after this, Bradley was being taken at launch site, so of course I headed over to test my luck. And test my luck I was really going to be doing. That was weird. Why did he shoot? <laughs> okay. That was fun. I don't know who Susanna is. I don't know. Was that sus? I don't know. 
I didn't know how sus it was at the time, but it was definitely sus, and Susanna would be paying us a visit very soon. I figured at this point, if I wasn't going to get raided, I'll have to do the raiding myself. My target being the neighbours who live down the coast from me. I hadn't yet got the blueprints for higher tier explosives on the level 3 tech tree, so of course, I headed down to my underwater labs to do a spot of farming. Um... That sounded kind of close to my base. Just one C4. Wait. Is that my base? There's no way that's my base, right? Okay. That sounds so close to my base. Okay. Yep, we're going. We're going. We'll get this kid after. If there is an after. Okay, they're actually pummeling as well. It's not my base? It's the base next door. Oh, I don't like the sound of that. One dead. Looks like there's a lot of them. Whoa. Okay. Oh, it's Susanna. This is the guy that was taking uh, Bradley before. They're still raiding that base. That base was decaying. And I never saw them online. I literally missed everything. I don't know how I even managed that. Man, if I had a bolty through that gap. He's dead. They could have a they've got to have a camper van somewhere. Oh my god, this Susanna guy, bro, doesn't miss. They keep coming back from somewhere as well. Every time I kill them, they keep coming back. They must have bags or a camper behind those rocks somewhere. I'm going to flank this guy. He's on his own. This Susanna guy. I'm going to respawn in my starter base which has a kit in it, and I'm going to go from there. Okay, so he just knows. Man, I don't know about this guy. Unless I got called out from across the other side of the water. But I don't think I did. It's literally just me versus this one guy. Just this Susanna guy. He's not leaving. And he just knows where I'm peeking. Nice. And now he starts heading up that way as soon as I spawn up there. I'm pretty sure he's the only one here right now. The rest of them have left, which might mean they're going to get boom for my base. Oh, there's one coming back. Oh, they're all coming back. This might be it. Yep, here we go. We'll grab some high velocities. Probably should close all this up, actually.
But they're just shooting Insin rockets on the walls. They're just getting rid of all my external walls right now. Although they appear to be missing. Oh yes, of course he hits that. That one's dead. I don't think they have a raid base, but they do have bags. Another one. Another one. Rockets. I'll be taking those. Hmm. Let me guess. Susanna. Okay, this guy's, this guy's definitely cheating. I'm, I'm not just tripping. This guy's definitely cheating. Of course, the one time I'm getting online raided is by a cheater. The rest of them are so bad. It's just the cheater that's good. Let's see if I can come from behind him here. That's two of them dead. Now I just got to kill the cheater somehow. Of course he peeks as soon as I start running across the open. Okay, I'm not doing myself any favors. What? Dude! Oh my god. He, he's, he knows. He fucking knows. He, oh my god, please, dude. No. Dude, look at him. Look at him. He's dead, he's dead, he's dead. They're so bricked. That's the first time I've died to one of them that's not Susanna. Oh, please, that's him. That's him, that's him, that's him, that's him. Please, please, please. Just ban the cheater. Look at him. They're bots. And they're still going. They're still blowing. Surely not. There they go, there they go, there they go! They're gone, they're gone, they're gone! They didn't go, they didn't go, they didn't go! Look at them all sleeping, dude! 
this guy here would have left team straight away. To right, to right. That's him. That's him. They're all gone. They're sleeping or dead. Holy shit. After a rather concerning period of time, somehow I managed to fend off a five man, one of which was hard cheating. I got all the goop inside, sealed the compound, and realized that they were actually blowing a direct path to my tool cupboard the entire time. And it was a lot closer than I had realized. Turns out they had arrived in two fully armored tugboats, so of course I had to make the investment of rockets that I had gotten from them to see what was inside. And my god do cheaters get loaded in this game. To save time, I'm just going to leave this screenshot here of all the loot that was in this tugboat, let alone what I got off them from the raid as well. There was also a second tugboat which had less in it, but still a substantial amount of loot, especially for a solo. After sorting all of it away, we could more than comfortably raid the base that we suspected Geneva and Colleen lived in. Oh, it wasn't even them. If you enjoyed this video, you'll probably like this one too, where I built the fastest furnace smelter in Rust history. 